Medicine Area Technical College. And uh, today we're going to show you our FANUC Automation Challenge project. We want you to draw a bicycle. So go ahead and draw one up by hand to see what you can come up with. Uh, we'll wait here. We'll be around. Take your time. Don't cheat. Don't be looking it up anywhere. And see what you come up with. Alright, very good. So, what did you come up with? Did it look something like this? It's pretty hard drawing something from memory. So, um, those obviously wouldn't be right. You couldn't build them, even some some really fancy frame designs out there. But uh, what you should have come up with, or if you remembered it right, this is kind of what a bike frame looks like. Okay, we got the front fork, we got the top two, we got the chain stay, we got the seat tube stay, we got the bottom bracket, and the cross tube. We got the rear wheel and the front wheel. So we came up with it. Great job. Very nice. We're going to have a discussion about how a small change can have a big impact. So we want to focus on bicycles. 18 million bicycles are sold annually in North America. Did you get a new bicycle recently? Maybe you would like to have a new bicycle sometime. You know, maybe you're still growing and you want to have a bigger size. Or you want to have a, you know, one with more gears. Uh, maybe a mountain bike or BMX bike. There are all kinds of bikes out there. So here's a small selection of what bikes are out there and typically called. So we got delivery bikes, BMX bikes, mountain bikes, uh, recumbent, racing bikes, folding bikes, children's bike, and hybrid bikes. All kinds of bikes out there. Um, so we talked about yeah, a small change and the big impact it can have. So we want you to think about what it takes to paint a bicycle. Um, 95% of all bicycles produced are painted either by hand or in a semi-automatic process. Um, when you paint by hand, so just imagine you spray can, you start spraying, you would have a lot of overspray, it's just not very consistent. And it's really hard to do it by hand accurately. Even a semi-automatic process that most factories use isn't that accurate. Meaning that only 50% of the paint that's sprayed is actually sticking to the frame. Um, also, most of the paint uh, is uh, mixed with solvent. Uh, it's a lacquer thinner, it's added to the paint, and uh, it's needed so that the paint can dry. The solvents, the volatile organic compounds, um, they evaporate and that lets the paint dry to the frame. Uh, so why should that matter to you? That's a pretty good question. Uh, well, first of all, buying a new bicycle costs money. Uh, if you paint a bicycle by hand, it typically costs more because the labor cost is higher and you have a lot of overspray, invasive materials for each bike. Uh, also, the volatile organic compounds, the VOCs, uh, they evaporate and can, have, can end up in the environment. So, before we start programming anything, let's do a quick math. Okay, so I want you, if you have access to it, get a bicycle frame and start measuring it. Start measuring the length, the accumulated length of all the tubing on here. So you got the front fork, you got the head tube, you got the seat tube, you got the top tube, you have the uh, uh, cross tube, the rear seat tube, at the rear chainstay. So when you measure this, just add up you know, from intersection to intersection the length in inches. So this one is 20 and a half inches. When you measure the back, make sure you measure each length and multiply it by two. So if you do that, you get about 178 inches. That's uh, an adult frame that I have here. And uh, the next thing we need to average and uh, try to calculate is the average diameter of each tube. Okay, so you can see these tubes are pretty big in diameter. They're not actually perfectly round. They're a little more rectangular. Uh, the back chain stay and uh, seat tube stay tubes, 
they are much smaller. So we went up about an inch and a quarter diameter average. So we also need to consider the wheels. So I have a wheel here. This is a, uh, a pretty nice wheel. You can see there is some uh, width to the rim. The braking surface cannot be painted, but we're going to pretend we're going to paint our wheels as well. So when you do the math it on, remember, there are two wheels per bicycle, and there's one side, and there's the opposite side. So you got two sides to each wheel, front wheel and back wheel. Okay? So the outside diameter, the paintable area, is about 26 inches. The width, the paintable part, is about an inch and a half. So the next thing you have to know is the paint thickness. So each layer of paint that's applied is about five thousandths of an inch thick. Um, when you paint a bike, or even when you paint by hand, you don't get 100% coverage every time. It takes about four layers of paint to completely cover a bicycle frame. So it's about 20 thousandths total paint that's used to paint a bicycle frame. So I gave you some numbers. You can measure your own frame if you want to. Uh, you can try to calculate the average tube diameter. Um, when you calculate the surface area, yeah, make sure that you include the two rims that each has two sides. All right. So the next thing is, once you have the surface area, we're going to uh, multiply that by the thickness of the paint to get a volume. Okay. So we're going to include the frame and the wheels and uh, take 20 thousandths for our paint thickness. Um, now we talked about overspray and efficiency earlier. Um, if you just paint the frame and you think about the amount of paint that's on the frame, that's about one pound of paint. Would you have thought that? That's a lot of paint. Think of a block of cheese you usually buy. That's a pound. That's a lot of weight. Some of those racing frames that I have here, like this one, it's a pretty high-end carbon fiber frame. It only weighs about six or seven pounds. So one pound of paint is a lot. It's a lot of racing bicycles have thinner paint and more sophisticated paint. The other thing we have to consider is the uh, amount of volatile organic compounds, the VOCs. So one pound of paint, remember the ratio was two to one. So if you have one pound of paint, half that is a half a pound of VOC that evaporate into the air. Efficiencies. So we talked about the manual or semi-automatic process. Uh, it's only 50% efficient, meaning you lose about 50% of the paint that's used and actually applied to the frame. Um, so one pound of paint in the frame, 50% efficiency, it's about half a pound of wasted paint per bicycle. In addition, that's about a quarter pound of VOCs that evaporate. Now, if you look at a robotic automation uh, process to paint a bicycle, they're much more efficient. This may not seem like a lot, but it's 25% more efficient. So 75%, uh, only a quarter pound of paint is wasted per bicycle frame and rim. It's only uh, a quarter, an eighth of a VOC that evaporate into the air. That's a big difference. May not seem like a lot right now, but wait. Remember, there are 18 million bicycles sold in North America annually. And uh, only 5% are painted with a robot. So that's a lot of paint that's used to paint bicycle. 18 million pounds. Now think about the money all that paint costs. Think about the waste that's produced. If there's one pound of paint in every bicycle. So, you can do some more math. We'll give you some answer later on. Now we want to challenge you to program a robot to efficiently paint a bicycle. Okay, so quality is very important. You know, if you ever use a spray can to paint something, you can't just go as fast as you can because you don't get the coverage, the quality that you need. You have to go a nice, steady, consistent pace and distance from the object. Okay, so it's very important to do that. Um, we also are going to pretend we're going to paint the rims 
and the frame a different color. In our example, we're going to have two rims, and we're going to have our frame and the front fork installed. Okay? So, let's see what you can come up with. I'll give you some requirements, and then later on I'm going to show you a completed project. So, the requirements are precision and accuracy is very important. So, to get optimal coverage, you don't want to exceed 200 millimeters a second. Uh, also, you want to maintain the paint width set on the frame or tubing. And what we did to simulate that is, we used the laser pointer. Now, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you, know, you can see the line width. The closer you go, the smaller the line gets. So we used a laser pointer and we added a small actuator to turn this button on and off. So when we do moves between the frame, uh, from one point to another, or between the wheels in the frame, we make sure we turn the paint off, move to the next point, and turn it back on. So I got a little bicycle here. We 3D printed these. So you can also print out our sheet we're going to give you and simply do it on a piece of paper. Make sure you don't idle or stop anywhere in the frame because you know, then paint builds up and then will be bad quality. I uh, also want you to use a main program that sets all the parameters like your override, your user frame, your tool frame, your registers for counting, number of parts produced or number of cycles and your cycle time. Uh, we'd like to see three subroutines. So one to paint the rims, one to paint the frame, and another one to purge the paint gun. Because remember, we got two different frame colors. We got uh, one for the rims and one for the frame. Make sure you teach a user frame uh, for your part. Make sure you use a tool frame. You have to use appropriate motion types for painting. So the move to home should be enjoined. The move to purge should be enjoined. But when you paint the frame, you want to make sure you paint straight linear lines. Uh, want to keep track of the number of completed paint cycles. Remember there's four cycles for each bicycle frame because each layer is about 5 thousandths thick and the total thickness needs to be 20 thousandths. Last, you know, make sure you track the cycle time for each cycle. There's some optional challenges and requirements that you can add to it. You know, if you have maybe a marker that you want to use to paint the bike frame instead of a laser pointer, use two different colors. Uh, you can also 3D print your own bicycle frame. If you have access to 3D printers, you know, we just have a nice flat model we'll give you. Um, you can print in 2D, just a piece of paper, and create your own designs and paint those later on. Um, I want to make sure that uh, you can also paint from both sides. Okay? For our basic example, we're just going to paint one side and that's it. But if you have the ability, you can maybe take the frame and then rotate it and paint the other side four times. Uh, if you have a conveyor, maybe you can convey the part into position and uh, paint the bike frame. Um, or uh, you can use just a simple light that you can turn on um, when you start painting and turn painting off. So you can still use a marker or a pointer to trace this and then you simply have a light come on uh, that stays on while you're painting and turns off when you're not painting. All right, let's see what we can come up with. Thank you. And off. We just painted the two wheels. So now we're purging the paint gun. We're going to paint the frame now. And then do the two vertical tubes. Then we go back, purge again. Because we're going to repaint the rims for the second cycle. Front rim. Again, another purging cycle. Frame. This process is going to be repeated four times total. 